15 days. Legend 169. Third place? We're officially qualified, folks. Hey yo, how's it going everyone? And should be here today with another video. For those who may not know me, I am a free-to-play Vanguard Zero YouTuber. Today, I want to talk about my experiences on the grind last season. So, how did I get third place? Why did I want to get first a third place? I mean, I wanted to get first place. Today, I want to talk about my experience on the grind, why I wanted to top, how did I top, and what kind of tips and tricks I could give you. And lastly, of course, thoughts and experiences that I would like to share with you. So if you are interested in playing competitively, if you have experience and want to relate, or if you just want some entertainment and watch people, you know, struggle balancing everything in, in life in general for a children's card game, you're in the right video. So um, with all said and done, let's get straight to the video, starting with the incentives. So. First of all, incentives. Why would I want to do this grind in the first place? Well, there are three main reasons. Two at the start. First of all, the Bushiroad Spring Fest. So I'm sure everyone should know this. Top 28 of uh, ranked on ladder will get you an invite to the championship in June. You will not only get sleeves to flex, which I missed out on during the summer championships, but also 500 gems on the side, which is, you know, five pack, which is not bad. Not, not the main reason why you do it, but better than nothing I suppose plus an upside of up to 100,000 gems so that's a lot um, as a free-to-play player that would be a dream next up we have MKW Ace Shiroyasha Championship so this was announced seven days into the season so this didn't really factor into the original um, incentive going into the uh, in into the grand but how it works is top 10 gets a silver invite which means you get qualified to qualify for the championship but you still got to win another tournament or top three gets a gold invite so that means you skip the qualified qualify at the end it's confusing but basically you get to join another championship and you get to win up to ten thousand gems and one thousand one hundred dollars and more goodies so i don't know about you but 10k gems still a lot still a lot and one thousand bucks pretty 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 neat to me and lastly third i want to get first place we already got second place early September. Fortunately, there's no more communism, no more uh, leaderboard sharing anymore. Secondly, we already got to Legend 133 in early June. Uh, the game is no longer a farming simulator, so it's not as inflated anymore, but I wanna challenge myself and see if I can get more than that on a more healthier ladder system. Um, clearly, that absolutely didn't work out for me, but uh, close enough, right? All right, so ladder experience. Ladder experience for deck lists. I uh, played a lot of variety. So at the beginning, I played a lot of Eradicators, Revengers. Um, I think that these two decks played really, really well last, se last season, and I was comfortable with them, right? You know, I played a lot of Erads, played a lot of Revengers. There's no question that these decks are solid decks, right? There's no, there's no question. But after rolling in the gacha and I got to play Kagero, Kagero is really fearsome as well. And it's, it's, it's more consistent in the sense that you have a PG um, that definitely does help you cover up some matchups like, like Reiji. God damn Reiji. Um, and also, of course, eventually you get burnt out playing like, you know, just three decks, right? So I did play um, some Hyrule decks. I did play some Beast Deities. did play some Link Joker just to spice up life because I just... You know, when you play the same thing over and over again, you might get better because you're specializing. But at the same time, it feels terrible, terrible. It makes you want to puke. So for those who are like asking like, oh, why don't you play Reiji? Why don't you play Silverthorn? Why don't you play Battle Sisters? These decks are faster, you know? They have crit pressure or really good multi-attack pressure or, or all that stuff or just, you know, fun new stuff. Why? Because I'm a free-to-play. I didn't spend that many gems and tickets on this gacha. And that's a limitation. If I had Reiji, if I had Silverthorns, if I had Battle Sisters, at the very least, I would be having more fun with the ladder experience. And at the very least, I would have more options. You know, there's no question that Reiji is strong. There's no question that Silverthorn is strong. Are they the best deck in the format? Can't answer that because I haven't played them. But at the very least, more variety, always nice, especially when you're doing this for 15 straight days. This is pretty ridiculous. 
on the note of VP farmers and hackers, I definitely think that VP farmers are definitely occasional, definitely not rare. Um, and there are trolls here and there, um, but you know, still makes the latter experience a lot easier. And you can argue that because of this difference, Global's you know, legend ranks are more inflated. I, I definitely will say that I don't have the JP experience to actually compare, but it's not like 20% or 30% of my ladder experience is VP farmers, right? So, so that's anecdotal. That's not like statistical. I don't have every single game markdown, but <laughs> how much of a difference will it make? I don't know, but it's definitely um, hackers. None, absolutely none. I've not encountered a single one in my 15 day grind. So that's absolutely great. With that said, there were some connectivity issues. There are some games where I just, you know, game just doesn't work instant lose can't room not found ggwp and it sucks but at least you know someone else not benefiting out of it i guess for the clowns just a few things to clarify yes i am human that means i exhibit decreasing returns to scale the more hours i put in the more tired i am and so the more prone to errors i will be i think that's pretty logical right nobody ever claims to be jesus at vanguard like none of my videos except that joke video um did i claim i have the best deck ever oh my god best deck ever <laughs> no 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 i never i never state that i don't think there is a best deck ever always 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 i claim that you need to make a deck for your own because everyone has a slightly different play style and everyone has a di slightly different approach to the game no okay so maybe maybe you know, you have a problem with me making mistakes or blunders like, oh, I'm so sorry. That's just how it is. I put a lot of hours into this game, especially this season. It is hard. So please understand. Um, second, I don't do drugs. I don't even know why this, I need, I need to bring this up. But I guess fun fact, weed is legal in Canada. So if you think, you know, smoking weed or, or, or you know, whatever uh, helps you play better, um, come to Canada, I guess. Or, um, you know, I guess if, if, if you want to go through legal means that that's that's the case. If you if you don't, then, you know, you have a lot of avenues. Um, won't comment on that. And um, yes, I have no life. So uh, I have a lot of stuff, you know, projects and stuff. I, people that follow me, follow the grind will know that I'm still doing essays and uh, still doing some life stuff here and there. But I'm basically holding my phone next to me while I'm like doing everything. I put my phone to the side. Vanguard Zero is a game that you don't really need to be 100% attentive to. Definitely play worse when you're not 100% attentive, but um, you don't have to be, you know, following everything when it's your opponent's turn. Um, rarely speaking, would I care enough to actually know what they're doing? So definitely, yes, I have no life, but that doesn't mean you can't play a lot on the side. And others, others, other thoughts. Uh, I know that some players are throwing. I know that some players are account sharing. And I have a firm stance that I do not agree with any of this. I've heard players say that it's not against terms of service. It's not against TOS. I think it's wrong. But maybe that's just my pride. And me not being rational and objective, you know. I've told this to many players like, oh, why don't you do it? Um, or, you know. Why don't you ask and i don't think i don't think it's right right just just me personally i guess that that's just my pride speaking moving on to some tips i would like to share there are a few main things that you need to take note of and i think these are definitely helpful tips first of all at the very least think think about your game Right? What does that mean? Know the ins and outs of what you're trying to do. Whether that's the, the deck you're playing, your list, know the tactics, the synergies, know your matchups. Make changes. Make changes to the list. Make changes to your tactics according to what you see, what you encounter, how you play. Again, like what I said just now, there is no best deck. You will see if you go look at championship lists, if you go look at like good player lists, Everyone could have like 70%, 80%, 90% of the same core idea, but not necessarily the exact same list. That is pretty rare because everyone has maybe that one or two of that they really, really like more than other people. Maybe they like four of this, but not three of this. Uh, and these changes you really have to make to suit your own play. 
Secondly, choose your meta. There are so many choices you can make. Choose your meta. There are five different metas you can pick from, from March to April to May to June to July. You know, that's five different sets, five different metas that you can pick from. Pick, pick your poison, pick the one that you will be performing the best at, or you think your opponents would perform the worst at. For example, if you have invested heavily into Chaos Breaker Dragon, right? You have a lot of Link Joker mats. Maybe the Chaos Breaker Dragon season, well, uh, when set 14 comes out, that those two seasons is when you should strike, right? Because Chaos Breaker Dragon is a really good deck. The lock, uh, the anti-lock stuff isn't out yet until set 15. So maybe the rank ladder for set 14 is your best, your best opportunity. Rank or open qualifiers? I get this question a lot. In my opinion, I prefer ranked because it's a better measure of effort, right? There's a more proportion effort to return ratio. Uh, with open qualifiers, it's, you know, you only have two shots, two open qualifiers. It's a best of one format. And I'll tell you that there's going to be a lot of competitors because it's the more convenient option, right? It's going to be a long day. And, you know, the odds of you winning every single game for like maybe like five games in a row, if you find championship tournament difficult, when everyone's super competitive and you have to play like maybe 10 games, maybe 15 games in a day, you're going to be, you're going to go insane. It's going to be really, really hard to just focus on the day and win every single game. Because unfortunately, there is variance in this game, right? If your opponent six damage shields once, that's the end of the run. On ranked, well, you're playing for 15 days, right? Every single game counts, but it counts less than uh, on during the opening qualifier day, right? You can win some blames through the rank run as long as you win more games. Open qualifiers, you can't afford it. You have to win almost every single game at the very least to actually get qualified. So that's the biggest distinction. This is why I chose ranked because it's more proportionate for effort and your game. There's less variance involved, long run less variance. I think that's pretty basic you know, knowledge as well. But just, just for, for you to understand, this is why I chose this path. It is definitely a lot more uh, harder but again, I'd rather know that my efforts will pay off than know that, well, if I get one six damage shield, it's GGWP, that's the end of the run. So that's just hold your expectations if you just only want to do the open qualifiers is what I'd say for the very least. Next is ask questions. The community is very friendly. Um, I try to answer any, every question I can, though sometimes just YouTube just doesn't notify me, but I try my best, right? I try my best. And lastly, go for it. And if you're going to go for it, don't half-ass it, commit to it. I've had people come to me and they're amazing people, but they're telling me they got 29th or like 30th or like 69th. And there's nothing I can do at that point because the season ended, right? I can only console you. I can only tell you, well, maybe take a break. Uh, maybe try better next time. But like, I'd, unfortunately, that's all I can offer. I can't change the fact. So... For my strategy, I just decided if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it, right? And you should too. If you get like first place on the first few days, that means you have breathing space. You can lose 27 ranks until you're out of the out of the running for top 28. Or you can lose like nine ranks before you're out of the running for the, the silver invite for Shiro's tournament. So really pace yourself, but don't be too loose, right? There's nothing wrong with being more competitive early on. Just as long as you don't become like the hare in the rabbit and the hare, uh, the rabbit and the hare, the, the hare and the turtoise race, then you're, you're, you're fine, right? Just give yourself some breathing space, but always be conscious. And lastly, if you really need to go into the gray area, you just, I'd say go for it. Uh, as we've seen from the results of several competitors, objectively, there is nothing wrong. There's no penalty. As... As a competitor and uh, my own pride aside, I'd much rather win than lose every day of the week. I'd much rather be 28th than 29th, especially when you're not going to get penalized for it. So I'm just going to put that out there. It is what it is. Into the future, what is my plans? Well, there's Shiro Fest in June, which is the set 16 meta, and Spring Fest in July, which is the set 17 meta. And these two are very different metas. I'd say um, if you would like something to compare with, set 16 meta would be like the recent uh, Japanese um, 
championship finals. So that is uh, interesting. Roughly speaking, I'm expecting a three deck format, but I don't think it's confirmed. So you would bring three decks, you would get one banned by your opponent, and you play the two, you have to win with both. I think that this is uh, this is going to make the free-to-play status much more of a struggle, but that's a story for another time. On a more personal note, I'm definitely tired. Um, I've fallen asleep countless times playing the game, and you just wake up, you're like, oh, well, uh, I lost that, but there's nothing you can do. Um, and even, even, even doing this, uh, editing this video, like halfway through, I accidentally deleted this half. You'd see it's a bit awkward, but so now I have to re-record everything, uh, reshoots. But yeah, I mean, overall, everyone made it better though. Chatting about the game, just vibing to music, hyping up the high rolls, and just collectively being salty about the sacks. It made it a much better experience than the last time. Yeah, overall, thank you all so much. And I definitely have to go 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 back to life. Um, and this means back to consistent updates so and uploads, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you want more right now and you're new to the channel, go check out the streams. It'll give you some insights into the decks I've you know played, uh, my thoughts, the changes I made. Um, and they're definitely ups and downs. So if you want to experience that, go check that out. Um, lastly, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers. I will be doing a giveaway soon, and uh, this includes prizes such as uh, in-game purchases. So of course, I'm going to give you cash, but you do what you want. Um, hopefully, you will use it to support the game, as I expect you to do, and other services like maybe one-to-one -one sessions where we can do whatever you want. You know, chat, chill, play some Vanguard Zero. If you want me to talk through some games, if you want me to just talk about something else that maybe we have in common, definitely down for that. Just uh, really nice to get a chance to just meet everyone, uh, meet some of you one-to-one, -one, but I, unfortunately, I can't do everyone. Um, so yeah, that is all for today. Let me know down below if you have any questions. I'm 100%, as I said, I try to answer every single question to the best of my abilities. Uh, next video will be, will be the set 14 overview, and this includes the anniversary content. It's taking a while to compile since it's a lot, a lot of files and a lot of stuff to, to review. So be sure to subscribe and stick around for that. It'll probably be up in the next day or two. So until then, that is all for today. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate the support you've given me for the last 14, 15 days and, you know, the last year. And I can't wait to catch up with you all again soon after I get some sleep. Bye.